Yashovardhan Azad, I want to understand from you, sir, a Pakistani woman comes into India, she has two passports, multiple mobile phones, apparently some data has been deleted uh, from her mobile phone, she walks into India virtually unchecked, stays in India for a fortnight virtually unquestioned. Does this, does this look like a regular cross-border love story to you or is there merit in the contention that perhaps Pakistan was creating a sleeper cell in the national capital region? For me, Gaurav, I think it's a pure case of a love story and I admire the grit and the braveness of this woman to come across thousands of miles and, and meet her lover here. Of course, there are speculations that uh, it, there's a possibility that she could be a spy. But then, you know, sleeper cells I mean, don't come from such uh, high-profile uh, uh, personalities. I mean, I would understand if in a Pakistani High Commission somebody is posted as, as a very senior diplomat uh, having a cover where they have contacts uh, at very high level and get the information. But for a woman like this, I mean, do you think that uh, uh, she would come so well known and then act as a sleeper cell. She became so, well known only because the lawyer alerted the police. She was living in our country for 15 days unchecked. The police and the intelligence agencies had in the foggiest idea that she had crossed over from Nepal into India and was living in Greater Noida, sir. Yes. The Nepal border is very, very porous. It's along so many hundreds of miles. And therefore, no matter how many check posts you put up, there'll be uh, infiltration from that side. And she utilized that and she came here. Mind you, their relationship had gone, uh, uh, their meeting points have been uh, before also. And, and, and she came with a specific purpose. Now, if you feel that she's an agent, you have a very easy target. Do you think the counter in, 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 you know, intelligence mechanism we don't have the infrastructure to pursue something like this. To make it an issue of a national importance, I think uh, it's indeed going too far. Sir, David Coleman Headley had an American passport. He came into India. He also waltzed around in our country unchecked. The consequences were disastrous. But Samad Srivastav, are there absolutely no checks on people crossing over from Nepal into India? And is there any corroborative evidence that she actually crossed over only on the 12th of May and not before any CCTV cameras, any information that, that you know, buttresses her story? See, Gaurav, there are a lot of evidences, but uh, not on a whole of a CCTV footage because that, that's what UP police has sought a report from SSB, how that particular Seema had crossed the borders in, in the, in, inside and came inside India via districts of Uttar Pradesh. But the major concern is when we reached at the hotel where the duo was staying for around seven days, number one, the hotel did not ask for the ID. Though the, the hotels claimed that they, they have been following this norm, since years in, ne in Nepal, in Kathmandu, at one particular stretch where a lot of hotels are located. But number two, which is a major big thing, if it is an unconditional love story, then what was the need, what was the emergence of hiding the names, be it of Seema Haider or that particular person, Sachin? Why they hid their names, they, they were very formal, they were very informal with the hotel guys, with the receptionist, they were even playing with the kids of the receptionist, receptionist uh, Ganesh, but they did not tell the real name, what was the need, they even asked for the places to go and uh, roam around in Nepal, they went to the temple, and when we visited the temple, another shocker came in, there was no record for the marriage of Seema Haider and Sachin in that particular Pashupati temple and that okay. has an, a, another board was also pasted outside the temple that only Hindus are allowed inside this particular temple that clearly indicates if they had tied not, not inside a particular temple they again yet like hotel 
hit their identity and that's a bigger question if that's a story of an unconditional love what was the need of hiding the identity because it's not a india is not a nation or nepal is not a nation where you see that in hindus or muslims can't get into a love marriage okay. it has nothing been a case then what was the need because you were already hiding the, the your, your pakistani status when you came via nepal border then what was the need and that is a bigger question which maybe agencies will ask stay with me for a moment yashovardhan azad from Gujarat, the international border through Rajasthan, uh, uh, you know, all led through Punjab, through Jammu, the line of control uh, all the way 770 kilometers of the line of control, 110 kilometers of the Siachen Glacier, actual ground position line. You have lakhs of soldiers who are deployed to check infiltration of Pakistanis. So, on the other hand, when it comes to Nepal, you have nothing, it seems, there. Any Pakistani can fly into Nepal and then come into India. So what's the point? I mean, is there, is there a major problem? Uh, you know, we have a fortress in front, nothing to protect the rear. Well, you know, Nepal border has been very, very porous. Uh, and, and there have been many entries like this, uh, even before. But, you know, in this particular case, we should not get into a kind of a McCarthyism which was going on in the United States of uh, America that under every court uh, there, is a, there is a spy. You know, we, we are obsessed with Pakistan. Suppose this woman is, is a spy. Is it difficult for our security agencies to keep a look and find out if anything happens? I, I think we are, we are, you know, giving too much importance on Pakistan and on these very, very little things.